thank you guys again for all the incredible feedback on all of our other episodes. Please like and subscribe so you guys can join us. We are former Apple employees here giving you a training on different variations of pages, numbers, Final Cut Pro, anything you want to know. Please, if you have anything you want us to talk about, let us know down below. Today is all about making a budget. We are using numbers to create a budget. And what I wanted to show you before I even start is a basic budget that I have already created. Now, I took an example for something I already have. And what I did is I implemented it into this example right here into this sheet. So you can see we have all the bills that we pay with negative numbers on there. And then we have each month. And then we have the total down here on the bottom. Then we have the income. So we have myself, my wife, and then the video business I have on the side, which is WV Productions, might I add. And showing you all the different examples. And here's the total income. And then on the bottom is the final amount of money that you have in return. Now, I'm going to show you what I did here. And I'm going to recreate it. And this is a very simple thing. You can see there's no fancy design. There's nothing fancy about it. It's very simple. So to get started, we're going to leave this sheet the way it is here. And I'm going to add a new sheet right over here with the plus sign. So that way we can start brand new, exactly the way numbers would start as an opening. So you can just do file new. And might I add, there are probably lots of examples out there. Apple has one here, which a template I don't necessarily like. That's why I made my own. But I'm sure there's plenty of other examples out there. You could do it by month. Like you could do like each table, which is each month. Uh, the way I'm showing you is just showing you all the months in one sheet. But you could. Some people have done January, February. You know each month. I find this to be the easiest thing because then you don't have to worry about making formulas over and over. So we're going to start off right here with the first table. So first thing we have to do is label the table. So if we go back to sheet one, I labeled it as bills. And as you can see, the font size is a little small for me. So I'm going to go over here to format and under title, we can change the title and we're going to use my favorite thing, paragraph styles. So I'm going to choose heading. And as you can see, it's shifted over to the left. Uh, and then I can actually just double click and I'll say bills. And if I want to center that, I can. So I can go over here and I can center it. Now the problem though is I'm changing uh, the heading. You can see again, this is a little uh, updated uh, asterisk here because the heading is not the same as it was. It was originally on the left. So I'm gonna hit update. And then what they'll do is the next time I have to make a table, I will be able to not have to recenter it. So you'll see when I do the next fee, uh, one. So I'm going to type bills and then you start labeling down the items you have. Now to make things a little simple, I'm just going to highlight everything in this one. I'm going to do command C and then command V. As you can see, it added additional items here, which made it very easy. So sometimes making the list ahead of time and then pasting it here will actually make your job a little bit easier. Now, one thing if you notice back on sheet one is I left a little bit of space here. And the reason why I did that is because I may have to add things down the line. So I think, and that way you don't have to redo the formula because if I click on this and you can see the formula is calculating everything in here. I left a couple of spaces just in case something changes. So, for example, I'm going to just drag this down, which on the corner lets you drag it down. And let's say I had something happen. I had a medical issue or I had some new service I bought. Let's say I bought Netflix and I want to add that. So that way you can have it already in the formula ahead of time. Now, next thing is we have to go across for the month. So we're going to start off with January. Of course, spelling is important, folks. Uh, but now, I don't want to have to type each month out. One thing that Numbers is very good at is it understands maybe the next thing you're going to do. So if I drag, and you'll see this little circle, this yellow little circle that goes in between here, you'll see the symbol change. And if I drag, look what it's doing. It's automatically adding the next month. Now, I have to drag this out to fit that. So I'm going to go out. And do the same thing. I'll drag it again from April, May, June, July, August, September. All right, let's keep going. I don't know if you know this, but there are 12 months in the year, folks. Just want to mention that in case you didn't know. 
the learning lessons we hear from the Think Different podcast. So that made things very easy. I already am ready to go. Now, the next thing is I have to put in my information here. So if, uh, first off, it's to $64, it's YouTube TV. But the problem is it's not in dollars. If you notice that, it just put a 64 there. Well, because I have to format the column. So I'm going to click on the entire column up here in B, and then I'm going to go to cell in the format area. Data format is currency. And there we go. And add it in there. Now, if you notice back on sheet one, these were red, and these are not red right now. Well, why is that? Well, because I typed in 64. You're not supposed to type in 64. Technically, it's a loss. So I have to redo this and do minus 64. And now there's a negative number attached to that. Another thing I have to do is I want to get the red because I think it's a good way to indicate it's a negative number. So I have to highlight the entire column again. And then I'm going to go to data format currency and then decimals. Now, if you want to add, if you want to do the decimal thing, you can, you could add decimal places. If you prefer, you can, uh, it's only really up to you. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go here and you can see there's red and there's columns. So red would be a negative number, or if you want to do the quotes. So that's how you get the negative or the red on there without actually highlighting it red. So it's very easy. So now when I type in the next one and I'll type in negative 800, boom, it fills it out and then so on and so forth. So now I've got to start filling in all of the information here and I'll just keep writing in things and we'll keep going forward. All right, so I went ahead and I filled out a couple more things, but I want to do a couple more things to it. So I want to make the text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to text. Again, I'm highlighting the whole column, and I'm just going to up it up to like 14. So it just gives me a little bit bigger of a number there. And I can do the same thing over here too. I can go to this one and just make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I want the size a little bit more. Okay. Now, another genius thing is we're going to go back to this little circle concept. Let's say that a bill is always the same amount. Well, then all we have to do is take this yellow and drag it across. And as you can see, it copied even the formatting. So you could go here, my markers never changes. So there are certain things that never change, but stuff like groceries and pets might. So we have to kind of, so if I type here again, and I type in, let's say it was 700, so I'll do negative 700. Well, the problem is the formatting didn't come over. So again, the kind of the same deal. You want to do, you want to format everything ahead of time. So formatting, I think, is just as important to do ahead of time than it is to actually start filling the numbers out. So I'm going to highlight every row, and that includes the rows that I'm not using. Now, I'm going to leave one row for my total, so I'm going to leave that by itself. But all the other, actually, I'm going to highlight that, too, because technically it's a negative number. So I'm going to highlight everything, every single row, and then I'm going to knock the, the size up. And as you can see, as I'm... I'm actually make, changing everything about the table, making it huge. So everything that's on the 2 to 22, I'm actually upgrading. I'm also going to go to sell. I'm going to say it's a currency, and I'm going to say it's a bread. So now if I type in negative 700, there we go, and then negative, let's say 600, and so on and so forth. So... Again, you're just going to just go across, and you, if, the most important one is filling out the ones that you know will never change uh, on that. And, of course, the electric bill or some, some things could change over time. But what we're going to do is I'm going to start filling out these numbers, and then we'll talk about doing a total. Now, another way you could do this, even just dragging across, let's say I want to do everything. Let's say everything is always the same. So I can click on this cell, go down to Shift, click on this number, and then do Edit, Copy or Command C, which is my favorite. And then I could just go to this cell right here and then paste. And as you can see, as I'm pasting with Command V, or you can go to Edit Paste, I'd always recommend using Command, you could just easily go across and just paste this all the way down. It makes it very easy. Now, even for something like Netflix, where maybe I'm doing, I'm starting it for the first time, maybe in March, I could just do negative 14. And there you go. So I don't have to worry about doing extra row. Now, if you run out of rows, then yes, you will have to format them. So if I go to add a row below and I type in, let's say it's medicine, 
and then I type in negative 90, you know, you see it actually took the formatting. So look how smart that was. So it actually understood that I wanted to add a row below, and I didn't even have to do it. So it's probably taking the formatting I did on the columns, and that's why it's actually understanding that. So, again, some things I forget even when I'm doing this. So, all right, let's now do the totals. So we're going to hit equal sign, which will bring up the sum. Now, the easiest way to do this is just to take everything in that row, and I'm just going to highlight everything. And by default, the sum tool is used, and it's already selecting B2 to B22, which I picked. Hit the check mark, and there's the negative number. And we're all done. And of course, we've already learned this, you could take that formula and drag it across other items, and boom, they're done. So that's just the first step of the bills. So I've done the negative numbers, so now we're going to do the next one, so that way you can get it from scratch. All right, let's go ahead and drag it all the way out in the corner, and we'll call this income. Now remember, we want this to match the heading. So I'm going to go to here and hit heading. And if you notice, it stayed directly in the middle, just like bills, because I before, remember, I formatted that using the update feature. So I'm going to say Tara, Will, and then video business. And a lot of times your income doesn't change. So you could say 14, I'll do 3,000, and then I'll do 2,000. Now, my video business every month changes, so I don't get the same income, so I would have to do different numbers. But you can see I'm going to keep everything kind of the same here. Uh, again, same thing, we have to go to formatting. So I'm going to highlight B, go all the way down to M. I'm going to do the text. Let's make this bigger. Let's do the cell and do it as a currency. All right, let's go here. Let's go to January. Let's make this bigger just by dragging across. All right, I'm going to take this number. It doesn't change. That's terrible. I mean, the income's a lot more than that. <laughs> uh, and then I'll just keep adding random numbers. Maybe I don't make any money for one month, so I'm just going to put zero. Uh, and then on, so on and so forth. Yeah, by the way, I'm using tab. Uh, a great way to go from one field to another to the right is the tab field. So that way it's a little bit easier why, how I'm going there without clicking. Now, by the way, if I did hit tab again, tab would actually make a brand new spot here. So because it was at the end, it made a new spot. But I'm going to undo that with Command Z. But in case you wanted to extend where you were at, just hit tab. It'll go out. All right, uh, I'm going to leave a little bit of space, but not that much. I don't get much more income than that. So I'm going to do total, and then we're going to do the same thing we did before. But I'm going to do it a little differently. So I'm going to highlight this row and that row together. And if you look on the bottom, here's the sum, the average, the minimum, the maximum, and the counter. So I could just drag the sum right here. So it does, this, it does exactly the same thing as the equal sign, highlighting everything. It's the same idea, just another way of doing it. Uh, so that's one thing I, I don't understand why Excel doesn't do that, but that is a cool feature. So I'm just going to drag across. There's the formula, and we're done with income. Now we just have to do the final one, which is the total. So now we're going to create one more table. Call it total. We're going to go to, yep, you got it, heading, paragraph styles. I only need one row because that's all I need. Oops, too far. And then we're going to say final income. All right, and now we have to put the formula in. What do we have to do? Well, we got to take the total and the total here and basically create a formula for it. So I'm going to hit equals. And then if I was to put, click that field, hold down the command key and click this field, see it adds those together and I hit a check mark. Now, if you notice, it already took care of the final income. I didn't have to write 
plus or minus because it knew this was a negative number based on the minus key. So that's how it knew. So I didn't even have to bother doing a minus because some people would have, if they, if they don't do the decimal or you don't do the minus, more importantly, if you don't put the negative number there, then you would it requires a little more work. So that's why I always recommend make sure you put a minus there. And then, of course, we'll drag the formula across. And there we are. And then just make it a little bit bigger. So if you look at the sheet one, there's sheet two. Uh, I just didn't bold it, so I could just put a little bold there. And there you go. And that's my budget example. So I hope you learned a lot from this. Uh, I hope this was very valuable. I think that for basics, this is a good starting point. And then if you really wanted to dive into pie charts and all that stuff, I mean, you can. I mean, personally, I use this to know how much we pay per month for bills. There are websites like mint.com that will help you out with that, but it's very over too much. And plus they're grabbing your information. And if you're not comfortable with that, then this is a great way to kind of iron out. So I like this a lot because it irons out the basics of what I make a month, what I know I have to pay every month. I don't include things like my restaurants in here or like things I go out with. I don't usually do that. This is for what I know I have to pay. And everything else is a luxury. So I hope this was really helpful for you guys. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We really do appreciate all the feedback that we are getting from you guys. And we appreciate the growth on this channel. And any questions you have, please leave in the comments below. We, we do answer all of them. Check out our weekly podcast on different subjects that are not even related to this. So please hit us up. And I appreciate every single one of you. But more importantly, I love every single one of you.